Find all our courses at Minded.com. We are getting to one of the most popular theories when it comes to organizational theory studies, and it's called a resource dependence theory. So here you see we have the definition and it's quite a tricky to understand. So I will try to draw the wall definition and, uh, and uh, quite a nice example of a resource dependence theory. So let's at first see the definition. This theory argues that the goal of an organization is to minimize its dependence on other organizations. Let's just highlight, uh, let's just highlight to minimize its dependence on other organizations for the supplies of scarce resources. So we all know that every organization has some scarce resources. Maybe it can be skilled personnel, maybe it can be raw materials, it can be machinery, whatever. Every organization has some scarce resources. And essentially we are dependent on other organizations when it comes to the supply of these scarce resources. So the goal of the, of the, if we are going to operate according to resource dependence theory, our goal is to minimize the dependence on other organizations. So let's see the example. Right over here is our organization and we are, let's say, some fast food restaurant and we are producing uh, hamburgers. We are making uh, hamburgers. And of course, as a supply, a scarce resource for us is going to be some special bread. So we are going to have a supplier and this supplier is going to be a bakery. So we have a bakery that is our supplier and is supplying us with a bread. Now, this bakery is also supplying other restaurant and this other restaurant is going to be, let's say, a seafood, a fancy seafood restaurant. A uh, seafood restaurant. Uh, restaurant. Now also bakery needs a supplier as well. And the supplier of a bakery is going to be some special farmer. So here we have a farmer. A farmer that is supplying a bakery. Now you see the wall chain. At first there is a farmer, then there is a bakery. And from a bakery we have these, these bread products that we are getting. And also a seafood restaurant is getting. Now we have to think about something quite quite special and that is inputs, uh, that is inputs and outputs versus outputs, outputs. Now, and, and, I have, and I have mixed the order, so let's think of it this way. So we have a outputs, outputs, and outputs of one organization can be input for another organization. So out outputs versus inputs. So now a farmer has an output. So let's say the 100% of, of farmer's output. So everything that farmer is able to grow goes to a bakery. Now, if a bakery has only one supplier, then also all of the inputs that bakery has are coming from this one particular farmer. This is a this is a quite clear relationship. So everything that the farmer produces, 100% of it, is going to the bakery. And now everything that bakery is getting is 100% from this one farmer. But here the situation changes. Now bakery is giving 90% of its products, 90% of its products to seafood restaurant and only 10% of its products to our hamburger restaurant. But think of inputs. We are getting all of our bread products from the bakery. So this 10% of, of bakery products represents a 100% input for us. We are only getting the bread from this particular bakery. Now for the seafood restaurant, well, they have much more of a suppliers and let's say that this 90% represents only, let's say, 20% of their input because they are very big restaurant and, and they have a lot of suppliers. So now, Think about one situation that we have over here. So that is right over here. So only a minor part of bakery's output represents a significant part, the whole part of our input. What does that mean? Well, that means that we are a lot dependent on this bakery, but on the other hand, a bakery is not dependent on us. 
if we are no longer a customer of this bakery, well, they don't care. They lost a 10% of their output. But if we, if the bakery will stop to supply us, we will lose 100% of our input. And now we are getting already to the resource dependence theory. If we are to analyze our company according to this, this theory, we have to think of two things. At first, how vital the resource is for us. And in this case, it's a, it's a bread. So we have a, we have a, we have a bread. And now this bread is used, is used in all of our hamburgers, in all hamburgers, hamburgers. So in our case, the, the resource is what we call a very, very vital, very vital. And now when we understand that the resource is very vital for us, we have to really work with it and focus on it. If it was, for instance, cucumbers, if it was cucumbers, cucumbers, it's only used in some, in some of our hamburgers and it is not really vital. Because if we run out of cucumber as well, nothing really happens. But if we run out of bread, we are in a big trouble. Second thing that we should analyze is the extent to which others control the resource. Well, let's think about it. Who is controlling the bread? Well, mostly bakery is controlling the bread because they are producing it. And then as well, a seafood restaurant is quite a lot controlling because they are taking so much of their output, they are taking 90% of their output and if they would like to, they can make some sort of a better agreement with, with the bakery so they can quite easily uh, simply starve us out of, of this very crucial resource. So now when we have analyzed that bread is very vital for us and that in this particular situation, both bakery and seafood restaurant are controlling the resource to a quite big extent, we should try to do something with it. So what can we do? We can try to work with a first point so that the resource will be less vital for us. Let me just change my color. So the resource will become less, will become less vital for us. How can we do that? Well, we will not only produce hamburgers, but let's say we will produce also some sort of a sausages, some sort of a sausages, where the vital resource will be, uh, let's say, a meat. Now, you, will, you can imagine that if we will be producing both sausages and hamburgers, and all of a sudden we will run out of bread, we are not in that big trouble. So this, this bread will be sort of less vital for us after this change. Then secondly, we can try to work with the extent to which others control the resource. We can try to develop a better relationships with our bakery. We can, for instance, try to uh, uh, change this ratio so that not 90% of the product will be going to the seafood restaurant and 10% to us, but let's say 40% let's say 40%, we will all of a sudden increase our production and then only 60% will be going to a seafood restaurant and we will become much more important customer for this bakery. Or another way around, we can try to make our own bakery. So all of a sudden we will have our own bakery and we can be pretty sure that the bakery will always be producing products for us. And what will happen then? Well, we will not be dependent anymore on the bakery, but we will be dependent on a farmer. So we can try to make also our own farm as well to have a complete chain. And look what will happen then. We will have a control over complete chain of a supply of this resource. Of course, it will be quite expensive and, and we have to finance it well, but in that case, no one else will be controlling the resource and we'll have a complete control over it. So that was the resource dependence theory where it is necessary to understand that the, our ultimate goal is to minimize the dependence on other organizations over the control of a scarce resource.